Hi, I'm Brandon McDonald, and welcome to a Corel Painter Essentials tutorial. Here's the final result. It's a few hours of painting, so I've sped it up a bit. I started from a photo of a sketch from my sketchbook. I like to paint the whole canvas with a multiply layer to get the brightness down closer to a mid-tone. It's easier for me to see the slight value differences when I'm not being blinded by a white screen. I'm starting as I often do with a simple overhead light source. A huge part of making a painting look good is having consistent lighting and readable shapes. An example of a readable shape is how his chest plate looks like a sphere. The key to painting consistent shapes is using a large brush and being zoomed out. Then after your shape is readable, then you can go in with a small brush and do whatever texturing or detailing you'd like. But be sure as you detail that you don't ruin the readability of your shape. I'm using my favorite brush for nearly everything, the Concept Art Jitter Smooth brush. Other than that, I use the cover pencil and the airbrush. Continuing to push the shadows more, I could have just used the color picker or eyedropper tool to select the darks from my reference photos. But instead, I'm just slowly working from the midtones to more and more contrast. I honestly was barely using my references at this point. I use them more later in the video. Metal and highly reflective things can be very difficult to paint because their values are all over the place. But there is a method to the madness. Highly reflective things reflect the environment, light, and nearby objects very clearly. The more polished and glossy, the crisper the reflections. Non-reflective surfaces also do slightly reflect things, but they're more softly reflected. A good way to make shapes read well is to categorize and separate them in your head. For example, the helmet. The main headpiece of the helmet is cylindrical, and the flared bottom part of the helmet is like the bottom of a cone. To add creases and seams if you have an overhead light source, all you have to do is draw the dark line that is the crease, and below it draw a light line that is the highlight. Here I'm adding color with a layer set to multiply. Over in the little layer window at the bottom right, the top of that little window has your layer modes. Oh, and I always like to stress using hotkeys for everything you can. If you hold E, you can rotate the canvas. B chooses your brush, and N chooses your eraser so you can quickly switch back and forth. I have an undo button on my tablet, and a button on my stylus that lets me grab the canvas. I'm not going to go over all of them, I just recommend being aware as you paint. Figure out what hotkeys you can learn that will save you time. There's a window for recently used brushes. I highly recommend having that open. For some reason, it's not open during this video. Experiment with colors using the Adjust Color menu located under Effects at the top of the screen.
here I'm cautiously doing a little bit of work zoomed in. Don't work too zoomed in. It can set a precedent for you to do the whole piece this way. Keep it zoomed out and painting rough for as long as you can stand it. Then once you've got something you're happy with, if you want, go crazy on those details. Painting zoomed out will also make you feel better about your time. If you do zoomed in work and you're meticulously painting every part, you could be hours in and barely have made any progress. I've started to like the look of outlining certain things after painting them. For example, on this chest here, I've outlined this highlight among other areas. I do a lot of this kind of outlining through this painting. It gives it a more hand-drawn and stylized look. I was really taking my time on this painting. Not a lot to talk about, just pushing those darks and lights and trying to make the shapes look right. I probably could have done this painting in half the time if I had just figured out what colors I wanted to begin with and started in on higher contrast from the very beginning. But I find it kind of fun and therapeutic to take your time on a painting and work your way from low to high contrast. <laughs> At this point, that background color can change. Here he's got sort of what looks like some atmospheric color. I used a layer set to hard light and just painted it in with a blue. I've also lowered the opacity of the layer. This layer basically just gives a subtle bluish hue to every part of the character. Here it is on and off again. He's going to be backlit, because it's the easiest way to do a secondary light source, especially considering how reflective he is. Or will be. 
If the secondary light source were directly in front of him, say for example, if his loincloth were glowing, it would be significantly more work than if he is back or side lit. A word for this is rim lighting. A fun trick you can do for color variation and for just for rim lighting or hard lighting in general is to duplicate the rim light layer or whatever bright light layer you're doing and on the layer beneath change the color. If you do this there will be a little bit of a transitional color which really helps. This kind of little trick is really great for subsurface scattering for skin so you have your bright white or yellow highlight or whatever color really and then the layer beneath it you have sort of a a more red because under our skin is red here i'm flipping back and forth between the single layer of rim light and the two layers of rim light where the layer below is a reddish orange i decided to darken the character by going into effects tonal control, and adjust colors. You can also get there by pressing Shift-Command-A. Here I'm adding reflected light from the ground to the underfacing side of every reflective surface. I originally chose a brownish green, meaning that the ground would be grass or dirt. I later changed it to a reddish brown, so it's just dirt. And now here I'm doing all of the upward facing planes with a bit of a bluish hue to indicate reflection of a sky. He's quite dark, so maybe it's like an evening sky. Doing some small specks of highlights. I'm doing a lot of work with the cover pencil to sharpen things up by punching in brighter and darker spots.
Once you're happy with your painting and basically calling it quits, you can compress layers and use the Distorto brush to reshape things if you want. The perspective on the eye holes of his helmet weren't consistent with the bottom part of the helmet. And the top part of the helmet isn't consistent with an evenly cut cylinder, but I like the look of the angled cut. I increased the size of the hand holding the shield because it's smaller than his sword hand. The easiest way for me to do this was by using the Distorto brush. He is complete! I did a little bit more work after recording, touched up here and there, and added a very simple background. Oops! The reddish-brown reflection on his armor is not consistent with the ground. Well, there's always something.